Today, I'm going to provide a broad overview on how to become a doctor and give you the knowledge necessary to maximize your odds at pursuing your dream career. Chances are that you and many people you know have thought about a career in medicine. Doctors earn extremely high salaries, don a white coat long associated with prestige, and serve a very fulfilling healer role in society. If that wasn't enough, the media oversells medicine through hit TV series such as Grey's Anatomy, House MD, and The Good Doctor. If you've ever dreamed of being a physician, we don't blame you. It's certainly an excellent career option and we're not the only ones who think so. The 2020 US News and World Report rankings of the 100 best jobs has physician ranked as number five in best healthcare jobs and number seven overall. In addition to the inherent joy underlying serving the health needs of the world around them, physicians earn high salaries that are well above their professions. According to Medscape's 2019 Physician Compensation Report, primary care physicians earn an average of $237,000 a year, while specialists see an even larger amount at an average of $341,000 a year. Before we continue, a brief intro. I'm Dr. Shidak Shamasyan, medical school admissions expert and founder of Shamasyan Academic Consulting. Over the last decade plus, I've helped thousands of students like you get admitted to their dream medical schools, including Harvard, Stanford, and UCSF, among others. We're on YouTube now to share my experiences with interested students and parents like you. In today's video, we'll provide you with a bird's eye view on how to make your physician dreams come true. By the end, you'll know without a doubt what the traditional path to medicine entails. At the end of the video, I'll point you in the direction of the highest yield resources for each subsection of today's video. Take this as your home base for all things medical school admissions. Let's get started. How long does it take to become a doctor? It's no secret that becoming a doctor will require a significant investment in more ways than one. Let's start with the time investment alone. The most traditional path involves you spending four years earning a bachelor's degree and applying to medical school during the summer between your junior and senior year of college. If you're admitted, you'll enroll in medical school and dedicate another four years after graduation from undergrad to earning your medical degree. This traditional path is also known to many as going straight through. As time goes on, this traditional path has become the metaphorical road less traveled. The average age of matriculation into medical school is now about 24, which means that most students are taking at least one, if not two or more gap years before enrolling into medical school. Students take advantage of this additional time to bolster their applications in any way they see fit, from completing remaining prerequisite courses to elevating their GPA or deepening their involvement in various extracurricular activities. In addition, there are a select number of programs available to high achieving high school students who are certain that they want to be a physician at the ripe age of 17 or 18. These students can apply to direct medical programs, otherwise known as BAMD or BSMD programs. These programs are highly competitive, but will allow you to complete both your undergraduate and medical degrees in anywhere from six to eight years. Regardless of the pathway, even after the traditional eight years of formal education, you won't be able to practice medicine without a residency. Because medicine is a diverse field, you'll have a wide variety of opportunities after you graduate with your medical degree. Other than clinical work, you can enter academia, public health, and even tech. To legally practice medicine, however, you'll have to spend anywhere from another three to seven years training in a residency program. Specialties such as family medicine and pediatrics fall on the shorter end, taking about three years, and specialties such as neurosurgery will take seven you'll no longer be strictly a student as you'll be paid during your training and you'll be responsible for your set of patients. Still, understand that the average resident's salary is $61,200 and you'll be expected to work much more than a traditional 40-hour work week. Summarizing the time investment altogether, expect to be in training anywhere from 11 to 15 years out of high school. This is a hefty chunk of time considering you'll only have lived about 18 years by the time you begin this journey. How much does it cost to be a doctor? What's more, you'll most likely have to make a financial investment. Finance company Credible reports that 80% of medical school graduates take on loans to complete their degree, accruing an average of $251,600 of debt and taking an average of 13 years to fully pay off their loans. Tack on the accumulating interest on the debt and the eight years of education where you're not making 
much money and you can certainly make an argument that becoming a physician is rather costly. How competitive is becoming a doctor? Lastly, you'll have to make an investment in yourself. Medical school admissions is extremely competitive and you'll have to bet that you spent your time effectively during your undergraduate years to have a chance at a medical school seat. In 2019, the AAMC registered 53,371 applicants and only 41% of them, or 21,869 students, were successful matriculants. Over half, nearly 60% of those who applied did not get a seat. I can spend all day exploring what factors constitute the difference between accepted and rejected applicants, but we don't have enough time in this video. I'd encourage you to watch three other videos that we filmed how to get into Harvard Medical School, how to get into medical school, and top four reasons medical schools reject qualified applicants. Links are in the description box below. I don't say all of this to scare you, but rather just to get you up to speed on the reality of medicine. Because it is so coveted as a profession, there are some considerable obstacles to hurdle before you go ahead and engrave your initials on a stethoscope and begin taking care of your own patients. Not every medical school will have the same set of prerequisites, but the variance is typically minor. I'd recommend the following coursework to ensure that you satisfy requirements for every medical school so you can apply anywhere. Biology, lecture, two semesters or three quarters, lab, one term. General chemistry, one semester or two quarters of lecture and one term of lab. Organic chemistry, two semesters or two quarters of lecture. For lab, just one term. Biochemistry, lecture, one term. Lab, not required. Physics, lecture, two semesters or three quarters, one term of lab. Math, for lecture, two semesters or three quarters, must include calculus or statistics. And for English, for lecture, two semesters or three quarters, must include writing. As you can see, there isn't a specific pre-med major that encompasses this exact coursework. To be clear, your major does not matter when it comes to medical school admissions. So long as you complete all the prerequisites for the schools you're applying to, you can major in anything your heart desires. Digital media, evolutionary biology, English literature, or applied biophysics. To drive this point home, there's no single best pre-med major. Certain majors and schools can be generally tougher than others, and that will play a minor role in admissions, but don't count on difficulty of major to make up for a lower GPA. I'd recommend you select a major that you know you genuinely enjoy. This will reflect in your performance. As for the prerequisite courses, fit them in where you can. GPA requirement. While most medical schools will not have an official minimum GPA requirement, many medical schools have shown a very high set of expectations when it comes to your GPA. In 2019 to 2020, the average matriculant GPA was 3.73, and even that can be a conservative number for the top 25 programs. While you aren't guaranteed to get into medical school with a 4.0, nor are you doomed should you have a lower GPA, it's in your best interest to earn as high a GPA as possible. But pass that to generate a balanced school list that matches your stats. If you'd like to learn more, I have two excellent resources on building a school list and how to get into medical school with a low GPA. Links in the description box below. MCAT requirement. Unless you're enrolled in select BSMD or early assurance programs, you'll also have to take the MCAT to further characterize your academic abilities. The standardized exam is built to set an equal playing field for all medical school applicants, regardless of the major or school you may have attended for undergrad. Of course, you should look to do as well as you possibly can on the MCAT. In 2019 to 2020, the average MCAT score among matriculants was 511.5 or an 84th percentile score. As with the other subsections of this video, I'd love to go into the strategies that we've developed over the years to maximize your MCAT score. But for a thorough look at that, I encourage you to check out our MCAT playlist, again, linked to in the description box below. Extracurricular activity requirements. Unfortunately, stellar academics can't make up your entire application. There are far too many applicants with great grades and MCAT scores, and so while stats are useful to segment groups of applicants, they aren't good enough to use as a final differentiating factor. Therefore, medical schools will hone in on the only other thing they can, how you've spent your time outside the classroom. We've covered this in detail in our guide to the best extracurricular activities for medical school, but as a short primer, you'll be expected to have obtained the following experiences. Shadowing experience, 
clinical experience, otherwise known as patient exposure, community service or volunteer experience, and research experience. Your goal here isn't to necessarily rack up as many hours as you can, but rather it's to demonstrate the following qualities as provided by the AAMC. Commitment to medicine, knowledge of healthcare delivery, leadership, interest in serving diverse populations, passion for science, communication, and interpersonal skills. Because these qualities are abstract, there are many ways to demonstrate them. When choosing the extracurriculars you want to dedicate your time to, choose the ones you genuinely enjoy. This will come across both in the hours you put into the activity and in your personal development as demonstrated by your medical school application and interview. Tips for high school students and early pre-meds. If you're earlier on in your career, say a high school student or a pre-med in your first or second year of undergrad, there are some foundational things you can do to set yourself up for success in addition to watching this video. Talk to and shadow doctors. To best understand what an eventual career in medicine would look like, spend some time with professionals in the field. I filmed another video going over everything you need to know to shadow a doctor. Again, it's linked in the description below. Spending time within the healthcare system and merely observing will go a long way to answering questions such as, can I imagine myself as a doctor or do I find this lifestyle enjoyable? Prepare academically in the sciences. It should be no surprise to you that the path to and through medical school will require you to excel in a variety of science courses ranging from chemistry to anatomy to pharmacology. If you're in high school, challenge yourself with difficult science courses to give you a strong foundation for your ensuing college and graduate school level courses. In addition, this coursework will give you even more context for what to expect going forward. While the biology in high school won't be the same as the physiology you learn in medical school, you can get a sense if you enjoy this type of subject matter. Don't get discouraged if biology, chemistry, or physics isn't your favorite subject. Many successful medical students and even eventual physicians majored in the humanities, economics, or other topics. You can still be successful if cells don't excite you to no end. Pursue meaningful extracurricular activities. Should you be settled with all the time, money, and academic investments that are required of a med student, focus your attention on your extracurricular activities. Medicine will put you face to face with ailing patients on a daily basis and you'll be trusted with their most vulnerable selves. To develop the appropriate soft skills to treat them the best you possibly can, develop yourself personally and professionally through meaningful extracurricular activities that give you experience working with people. Final thoughts. That's a broad overview of what becoming a doctor entails. While there are a considerable amount of things that remain to be discussed, you now have a good sense of what investments are required to first become accepted into medical school and second, to become an eventual physician. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. If you wanna learn more about the admissions process, I encourage you to start with our free comprehensive guide, how to get into medical school. The link is in the description below. I think you'll personally find the chapter titled The Medical School Admissions Dilemma very useful as it details the things you can and cannot change about the admissions process. The strategies in the guide are the same ones my team and I use to routinely help students get into schools like Harvard, Johns Hopkins, Mayo, and UCSF. All right, thanks again for watching. See you next time.